in Christ our risen Lord, dearly beloved friends. While all the lessons should be the focus of our weekly devotion and reflection, as you look at what has been selected for this Sunday of the Easter season, it goes from I'm not sure to I'm really not sure to good God, what do we do with all of this? But that's the challenge, to take God's word and wrestle the lively use of the word of God as we learned at the seminary. It's that task of poking and probing and finding how this word of God finds its place in your life and in mine. I must confess the first lesson doesn't start off well with the stoning of Stephen and his death as the first Christian martyr. It gets a little better in the second lesson about being nurtured with the pure spiritual milk, but then of course we're stumbling over our Lord Jesus Christ, cornerstone that he may be, he still is a stumbling block and perhaps not the most helpful image as we move from death to stumbling over things. And then we get to the Holy Gospel, which connects to the first lesson normally, and it does because most of you know that it's a lesson frequently used for burial services. There's a place for you that Christ has prepared. And the familiar line, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if you ask for anything, I will do it. The problem is with all of this lesson is we bump up against the secular calendar. Now, the church is not driven in its calendar and its thinking God knows, by what we celebrate in the secular world. Even if it is Mother's Day and Caregiver's Day today. And yet I have to confess, could we find a holy gospel with the word Father repeated more times on this day than any other day? In my Father's house, my Father, my Father. All good words, but Frankly, you could substitute mother or parent or caregiver because we need to remember when we refer to the first person of the Holy Blessed Trinity. We're not talking about someone who is driven by gender, but rather who is eternal. And we use all the images and adjectives available to us to try and penetrate and begin just to understand a little bit the mystery of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what do we do if we try to link all of this together? You do need to skip over and reflect later on some of the more familiar parts of these lessons. But finally, running through all of this is the sense of place. We have a place with God. Not a place that we have made ready, but one that Christ, through his death and resurrection, has prepared for us now and eternally as well. We have a place. And that's important to remember. That's important to give thanks for each day. For that place is not only prepared by God in Jesus Christ, sustained by the power of the Holy Spirit, but that place in this life is sustained and made real for us by the gift of God that give 
to all of us in mothers, in caregivers, in those who nurture us with the pure spiritual milk that we might grow into salvation and taste that the Lord is good. And we cannot underestimate that importance to have a place. We take it for granted, but think of what it must be like to be homeless, to never know where your place is going to be from night to night to night. Think about the ancient people of God, how they long for the promised land because they went from spot to spot to spot, wandering in the wilderness. No place to call home. And scripture reminds us, apart from God, we have no place. There is no continuing city here on earth for us, except that place which was prepared for us in our holy baptism and assures us that we belong to God for this time and for eternity as well. The secular world understands something of all of that. If you watch the situation comedy, The Big Bang Theory, you know that one of the chief characters, Sheldon, is always concerned that nobody is in his spot. And if someone is in his spot, he tosses them out. We laugh about that because it seems to be so ridiculous that he couldn't pick out another seat in that living room set. And yet, there's something important about place for us. And it reminds us that we are driven by that from the very day of creation. Our first parents in the Garden of Eden, after they had done what God had forbidden them to do, lost their place. Remember, God goes into the garden, and the first word from God's mouth is Adam and Eve, where are you? It was not a question of hide and seek, I can't find you, my GPS is lost. No, it was a question of the place you had, your location is lost. And you know the outcome of the story. The place that was given by God to our first parents was lost. And they were expelled from the garden until Christ comes and prepares a place for us through his suffering, death, and resurrection. One that is not only prepared for us now and eternally, but one that has Christ's promise that he will bring us there himself. So the first Christian martyr, could place on his lips, into your hands, I commend my spirit. A prayer from the Psalms, and yet one that is fully confident of the place that was his and to where God would bring him. We gather every day and especially on this day to celebrate the place that is ours through our holy baptism. You ask, where is my place? And we discover again we were baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and raised again to newness of life. That's the place God gives us. And then comes the question, who are you? The first one was where? Who are you? Child of God then, you have a name. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit 
and sign with that placemaker, the cross of Jesus Christ. And that becomes the way, the truth, and the life that leads us regularly to God's table. We have a spot there reserved for us. And we ought to take advantage of it. We ought to share with others who are not here that we miss them at table with us. Their place is empty. Come and join us. Because like Stephen of old, one day they will need to recognize the place that is theirs eternally and to nourish that place now with the pure spiritual milk that enables us to grow into salvation and to taste that the Lord is good. As we remember mothers and caregivers, we are thankful that in so many ways God gives us those individuals and others to provide that spiritual nourishment that not only makes a place for us now, but tells us, for the sake of Jesus Christ, we have a place forevermore that nurtures us when things are difficult, when challenges present themselves. We are reminded we have a place. We have a home in Jesus Christ. And as I have said to graduation classes and confirmation classes, the poet reminds us, home is the place when you go there. They have to let you in. Think about it. Sometimes, maybe that's not good news, this side of eternity. But we are let in by Christ every day. For this time, for eternity, we have our place. And nothing, not death in the first lesson, not any stumbling of our own because we don't get what God wants from us, not even our constant nagging, show us God gets in the way. For Christ does for us what we need and what we must have. So we are prepared for each day and for all of eternity. That's why it ends. If you ask anything, I will do it. Again, it doesn't end with, I will give it. But when we come to this God who is parent, who is mother, who is father, God will do, as our mothers have done for us and others, what needs to be done, not necessarily what we think, but what in the wisdom of the ages God thinks. So we string these lessons together. I commend them to you to reflect and to see each day where your place is and how that place is shaped and formed by the cross of Christ and the power of the Spirit. And then use each day to nourish yourself and others so that together and individually we may grow into salvation and taste that the Lord is good. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen.